Very few open world games offer missions as zany and outrageous as those found in the Saints Row series. Whether you're interrogating a fashion consultant out the back of a truck, engaging in a sword fight atop a burning junk boat, or fighting virtual dragons and a galactic alien tyrant, there is no lack of amusement that can't be found in any Saints Row mission. Though not every level is perfect. In fact, there's a handful of missions that are either ridiculously challenging or downright impossible. Get ready to throw your controller across the room because today we're diving into the top 5 hardest missions in the Saints Row franchise. For this video, we'll be simply looking at the levels that either test every feat of the player or have unfair elements that take a long string of luck to complete. Also, we'll only be looking at the mainline series, otherwise each number on this list would consist of a mission from the mobile port of Saints Row 1. With that said, let's jump right in. I think it's fair to say the later games in the series, especially Saints Row 4, didn't offer the same difficulty as the previous titles, though there's one mission in Saints Row the Third that still presents a decent challenge. Nightblade's return begins with the boss and Viola wearing disguises in order to infiltrate a stag PR center that kidnapped Josh Burke. Really? Things seem simple enough at first, you just need to keep your weapons concealed in order to bypass the guards. But it's when you take an unconscious Burk over your shoulder is where things hit the fan. Not only is your player's movement impaired for the remainder of the mission, this is also the only time in the game where your health and damage upgrades are disabled. This gives you very little time to adjust your playstyle before almost instantly being engaged by stag soldiers. You're likely to be taken down a few times as you try traversing through the four sections of the building. The office floor and lobby are exceptionally difficult, whether it's a constant barrage of stag lasers or the lack of cover to keep yourself protected. Plus, if you're playing on hardcore, these parts are going to take a couple tries. It also doesn't help that Viola is quite useless during this portion, typically falling behind or focusing on enemies that are out of the way. But once you reach the loading zone and place Josh in the getaway vehicle, it's fairly smooth sailing from there on. So yeah, the mission doesn't fall into the impossible category, but considering the limitations it puts on the player, it's sure one of the few hard levels that could be found in Saints Row the Third. Coming in at number 4, we have America's Next Top Scientist. Serving as the third and final mission of the Ultor Exposed DLC, the boss has to help microbiologist Terra, yes, that Terra, reach Mount Claflin for a news interview to take down Ultor. Don't worry, I will. However, the company isn't going to sit idly by, so they send in a literal army of Misako soldiers to stop you. After a brief fight to the mountain, you stop at Camp Claflin to stock up on weapons and defend crucial evidence from the previous mission. And boy, you better stock up because you're in for the battle of a lifetime. Seriously, Ultor sends in an armada of vultures, bears, SWAT vans, and Misako units. If surviving all this wasn't enough, you also have to keep Terra from going down and the evidence from being destroyed. Needless to say, you're in for one hell of a challenge. Once you do finally survive the onslaught, you then have to take Terra and the evidence to one final spot where six, count them, six vultures arrive to obliterate you. Keep in mind the two story DLCs were meant as endgame content, so it's expected that you would take on these missions with a fair amount of weapons and upgrades unlocked throughout the campaign. However, the DLC becomes available as soon as you complete the prologue. So imagine unexpected players doing these missions first without the proper equipment or upgrades. Yeah, this happened to a lot of players, and all of them were completely ass-blasted. I actually started a new save just to see for myself, and good god, you're completely screwed. Without having the Annihilator RPG unlock, taking out the final six vultures is one of the hardest things you'll ever do in a Saints Row game. But even with the right equipment, America's next top scientist is still a worthy challenge. It's no secret that Saints Row 1 has some of the most unforgiving missions seen in the series, and you don't have to look much further than Hail to the Chief for a perfect example. As the final mission of the game, well, let's say the last playable mission of the game, Volition pulled out all the stops and made quite a daunting climax. For context, Police Chief Monroe has Julius in custody and is forcing the Saints to do his bidding in order to keep their esteemed leader alive. Though after the assassination of Mayor Winslow and with no stopping in sight, Dex and Gat decide something has to be done. So, they plan an ambush to kill Chief Monroe during Marshal Winslow's funeral procession. Sounds easy enough. <laughs> well, let's just say that Stillwater's police force doesn't take it lightly when you try murdering one of their highest ranking officers. 
The streets become filled with FBI agents, SWAT vans, saints-wielding RPGs, and helicopters seemingly crashing out of the sky. You'll soon realize the sniper has nowhere near enough firepower to combat the rising threat, so you'll find yourself on the ground blowing up every police vehicle on sight. What's funny about all this is that this isn't even the hard part of the mission. After the funeral procession has been entirely wiped out, you and Dex have to reach a forgive and forget with full police notoriety. Now, if you're unfamiliar with St. One's notoriety, let me assure you that it's unmatched in difficulty except maybe Scarface and Grand Theft Auto V. You'll be constantly sideswiped by FBI SUVs, blocked by SWAT vans, sniped by helicopters, run over spike strips. <laughs> Trust me, it's a hassle. Even if you plan out the most proficient path to forgive and forget, you're gonna at least run through numerous vehicles until just scraping through the finish. So given St. One's notorious difficulty combined with a legendary firefighting police chase, Hail to the Chief earns its rightful place at number three. Up next, we have without a doubt the hardest mission in St. Row 2, Corporate Meltdown. Being the second mission of the Corporate Warfare DLC, the boss is informed by Ultor's Director of Special Projects, Erf Griffin, that Dex is attempting to move toxic waste from Stillwater Nuclear to sell on the black market. Dex wants to make his move tonight. Together we can stop him. I'm in. It then becomes your objective to steal the toxic waste from Dex with a little help from Griffin's security team. Now, if you thought America's Next Top Scientist was hard, Corporate Meltdown makes that mission feel like a pillow fight with Donnie. I am not exaggerating in the slightest. You have to take a waste disposal truck to two pumping stations where you're then confronted with ceaseless hordes of Misako. There's no vultures this time around, but there's enough troops on the ground to ravage you and even your frame rate. However, this is only the appetizer to the main course of pain you're about to endure. After filling the waste truck, you then have to defend two more with a tornado until they reach the docks. This immediately becomes infuriating for two simple reasons. One, SUVs will constantly surround the waste truck, drastically lowering its health, and blowing them up only hurts the truck even more. Second, every damn rooftop now has a Misako soldier wielding an RPG with pinpoint accuracy that can wreck the waste truck in seconds. So you'll be trying to keep these SUVs from getting too close while simultaneously trying to kill these RPG bastards. And if all that didn't seem unreasonable enough, an enemy tornado will occasionally show up to one-shot you 80% of the time with a single rocket. Now, you might be thinking co-op is the answer to complete this level. Let me just stop you right there, because co-op actually makes this mission even harder. During the tornado segment, the first player will actually be on the ground driving the waste truck while player two controls the helicopter. I know this sounds like it'd be easier, but no, now there's a timer. Two minutes and 15 seconds is just barely enough time to reach the truck and race across the entire island, all while being assaulted by SUVs and a seemingly endless barrage of rockets. Your partner can only do so much to help when they have to defend themselves from waves of enemy tornadoes. So even if you could pull off delivering all the trucks, there's a high chance your partner will get shot down and you'll have to start over. Bottom line, it'll take a combination of both luck and equally as much skill in order to beat this beast. Though once you do finally succeed, you're given a glimpse of what becomes a fulfilling, climatic, and legendary revenge story of... Oh... Now, before we dive into the number one hardest Saints Row mission, let's take a brief look at a few honorable mentions. Though Saints Row 4 doesn't exactly present the hardest challenge, part one of the grand finale is considerably the trickiest level of the game. The beginning is simple enough, being an on-rail chase to the Zen Tower, but once you get inside, things quickly become problematic. You have to defend Sid in the key as Zinyak sends everything possible to stop you. Marauders, murder bots, UFOs, tanks, CIDs, and even three wardens at once. This all makes for a decent challenge, but the biggest crime of this section is actually a glitch. The finale is notorious for having frequent crashes just before Sid is able to insert the key. So even if you're able to defeat all the enemy forces, there's still a chance the game will kick the bucket and you'll have to start over from the beginning. It's one thing to keep losing to a hard mission, but being punished for surviving a 30 minute onslaught is enough to bang your head through the screen. Salting the Earth again is considered one of the most frustrating missions for first time players due to one single aspect. After acquiring a shark to reach the yacht, a tornado arrives that will instantly obliterate you with a single missile. You can try dodging or firing back, but almost every time, the tornado will wipe you out. 
Thankfully, you can get on and off the shark and take out the tornado once it spawns. Though for new players unaware of this trick, it can sure seem like the most impossible level in the game. And of course, we can't forget the most frustrating and annoying mission in the series, Reunion Tour. Oh, shit. The level consists of taking Donnie to three locations where you then have to protect him as he plants explosives on Brotherhood vehicles. It can seem fairly standard at first, but you'll soon realize that this mission is filled to the brim with complete bullshit. First of all, Donnie takes forever to plant a single explosive. You'll wind up destroying five times the amount of Brotherhood cars in the time it takes him to set off one bomb. The only way to have him work faster is if you become his conjoined twin and don't move an inch away, but good luck doing that when waves of Brotherhood constantly storm in with shotguns and automatic weapons. Plus, if you're playing in co-op, good luck. Can I go now? What, you want a piece of this? Double the Brotherhood gets sent in, Donnie operates even slower, and you're more likely to get police notoriety. I could go on and on, but just trust me when I say that Reunion Tour has been nicknamed the Cursed Donnie Mission for a reason. And finally, for number one, we have What Goes Up. If you were to ask anyone who's played all the Saints Row games which mission is undoubtedly the hardest, it would be unanimous that the Cornales finale would take the top spot. For you see, there is no other level in the entire franchise as this amount of artificial difficulty and unfairness for the player. When it's discovered that Angelo is attempting to flee the city, Dex and the player have very limited time to reach the airport and stop him. For the rest of the mission, Dex gets in the driver's seat of his Raycaster as you fend off pursuing Carnalis till reaching Angelo's private jet. And here is where the madness begins. On most of the rooftops are over a dozen Carnalis members packing RPGs, and they will annihilate you in mere seconds. Sometimes you see the culprit of your demise, other times you're taken out without a clue where the shot came from. So it becomes a matter of perfecting your aim in a moving vehicle, all while memorizing where all the Carnelli's members are standing. And of course, Dex is no help. Instead of driving directly to Angelo, he treats the airport like a skate park and has to ramp off everything. Now, I understand that Volition wants to end a gang arc with a bang, but it's not supposed to be the player 300 times. Damn. Damn. Urgh. God damn it. Ah! I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna- MOTHER <laughs> Even after playing this mission for 13 years, it still never gets any easier. It's no surprise that a lot of players gave up on completing the story due to this single mission. But after the glorious moment of passing the RPG bastards, you just had to take out the private jet and you're finally free. Holy shit, we did it! Angelo is dead and you learn the player is an expert in shoe fashion. Shoes? Actually, they're these season's new- Bullshit! That's last year's fall collection. <laughs> Maybe not the greatest reward, but nothing can top the satisfaction of completing this godforsaken mission. And there you have the top 5 hardest missions in the Saint Tro series. If you agree with this list or feel I may have left a mission out, please let everyone know in the comments below. And before ending this video, I'd like to mention that there's currently a petition up on Change.org to have Saint Tro 2 get a remaster. I know the chances are very, very slim, but if we can show Deep Silver there's a large enough demand for our beloved title, who knows what the future might bring. And of course, I'd like to give a huge thanks to my Patreon sponsors, John, Sam Just, Delta, Big G, Red Skill 100, Dr. Purple Bunny 78, Gabriel Snyder, Fluffy Tail, Pokedex, and Specialist Angel Figueroa. Like always, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. And here is where the madness begins. And here is where the Batman begins. Oh, God.